To understand how brushless motors work, first let's take a look at how regular brushed DC motors work. A simple brush motor like this consists of four parts, the stator, the rotor, the commutator, and the brushes. The stator, as the name implies, is a stationary magnetic field generated by the permanent magnets on the outside. The rotor, in the, on the other hand, is the spinning part of the motor and is basically just an electromagnet. When it's switched on, its poles are attracted to the opposite poles of the stator, and it turns, so in this case, the north pole of the rotor would be attracted to the south pole of the stator and would go this way. However, when the rotor's poles and the stator's opposite poles are facing each other, the current going into the rotor has to be reversed so the motor would keep spinning. So how does it do this? Well, let's take a closer look at the rotor itself and see. The rotor has a copper sleeve around it called the commutator, which is connected to the windings of the electromagnet. When the rotor turns, the commutator acts as a mechanical switch that reverses the polarity of the motor, so it spins continuously. Electricity is passed to the rotor through fine carbon brushes over here, hence the name brushed motor. The brushes are the mo most vulnerable to wear and tear and also cause inefficiency. Brushless motors, on the other hand, work in a completely different way. In these motors, the stator is actually the electromagnet and the rotor is the permanent magnet. You can think of them as a brushed motor turned inside out. I won't go into the exact details of how they work, there's a great video here if you want to know. But basically a device called an electronic speed controller is used to turn on different phases at different times to make the motor continually spin. Brushless motors come in two types, inrunners, like this one, and outrunners, like these. Inrunners have the rotor on the inside the, of the stator, while outrunners have it outside the stator. Inrunners produce less torque but have higher RPMs. Outrunners are just the opposite and produce higher torque but at lower RPMs. Also, in outrunners, the whole can of the motor spins, not just this shaft. So if you look at this, for example, you can see that the whole motor is actually turning, not just the shaft, like in the inrunner here. Brushless motors have three wires, unlike brushed motors. These are used to energize different phases of the motor at different times. You'll notice that one's red, one's black, and one's yellow. This does not mean power, ground, and signal, like in servos. To make one work, you have to use an ESC to time the pulses of the current in the right order. These can be fairly expensive, just like the motors themselves, and some can only control the motor in one direction. Those are usually designed for RC helicopters and planes, where you don't want the motor to go in reverse at all. I guess it would be possible to design one yourself, but that would be a lot of work, so I'm saving that for a later project. It doesn't matter which way you wire the three wires coming out of the motor, but if you swap any two, the motor will turn the other way when given the same signal. Of course, this is nothing that can be co compensated for in code. These motors also have a rating known as the KV rating. It's a misleading name. KV makes you think of kilovolts. However, the K stands for constant. And this constant, when multiplied by the number of volts, would give you the number of RPMs your motor is running at. So in this case, the motor is rated at 1 to 50 RPMs per volt. So if you ran this at 6 volts, you'd get 7,500 RPM. Not sure how accurate this value is though, but you could test it by hooking it up to some sort of meter that could read revolutions per minute. Also, as a general rule, the lower the KV value, the higher the torque. Outrunners, like this one, have much lower KV values than inrunners. For example, this motor, the blue one, has a KV value of only 750, whereas this inrunner has something around 3000 or 4000 KV. This is the whole setup I'm going to be using to drive the motor. Right now it's hooked up to a receiver, which is going to be used to test the motor. To power the ESC and the motor, I'm going to be using two lithium-ion cells in series at a total voltage of 7.4 volts. You can see these uh, batteries cells here. They're rated at 3,000 milliamp hours. I'm not sure how close this is to the true capacity, but they're pretty good. However, lithium batteries, especially ones that are cheap off eBay like these, can be quite dangerous. So make sure you're charging it in a fireproof place, like in one of those uh, special bags that you get for charging batteries. Also, if your battery starts puffing up or expanding, throw it away. If it does start to burn, don't just chuck a bu bucket of water over it because lithium reacts violently with water. Right now I'm going to test the motor and uh, I've hooked it up to a regular RC transmitter and receiver.
So it's not receiving any signal now, so let's turn on the transmitter. That means it's ready to go, and let's try it out. It seems to be working fine and forwards. You might be able to see this, but, um, you might not be able to see this, but this motor has insane amounts of torque. Like, when I put it at full speed and, uh, make the motor break, it almost jumps out of my hand. Like that. That's because this motor is an outrunner and has a pretty low RPM per volt rating. One very important thing to note is that most, if not all, ESCs have something called the Battery Eliminator Circuit, or BEC. This basically eliminates the need for an extra battery to power extra ICs like in the receiver. It's vital that when you connect the ESC to your Arduino, you disconnect any other power like the USB cable. Otherwise, you otherwise your day is going to be ruined because you're going to connect two power sources together and blow something up. So you can always uh, check this by using a multimeter. Let's do that right now. Ignore the obnoxious beeping that's going to happen. That's just the ESC saying that it can't find any signal. So yep, you can see that it's um, giving five volts to any other um, any other devices. To hook up your ESC to your Arduino, you just plug it in like a standard servo. The white or yellow cable wire is always the signal, red is power, and black or sometimes brown or green is ground. Don't get confused though, with your regular motors, you also have three wires, yellow, black, and red. However, those don't go straight into your Arduino, those go into the ESC's three wires. It's a bit confusing, but it's, um, it's a stupid system, but, you know. You just have to try and learn your way around it. I've written some very basic code to try and get the Arduino to make the motor spin in one direction. As you can see, I've replaced the receiver with the Arduino board right here. One thing though is that most ESCs require you to give it a neutral or 1.5 millisecond pulse when starting up. This is usually to prevent you from switching on the motor, um, switching on the transmitter already giving a signal to make it go full speed. So let's try that out and just see if it works. So that's just saying it received the neutral pulse. And it should start spinning any moment. There we go. I've actually made it go backwards at full speed, which is uh, slightly slower than forwards, just because the ESC program pro programs it to do that. And yeah. But let's write, let's, let's write something more interesting using an LCD display to display the speed and direction of the motor. Turn this off. And let's get coding. Okay, so I've written a small program to run the motor through a full range of motions. I'm not going to go into the code, I've posted it in the description and it's pretty well commented so you can figure out what's happening. So it increments the speed pretty quickly. And when it breaks, it's pretty strong actually. There. And then it just goes backwards. And then keeps on looping. So there you have it, that's how to control a brushless DC motor with an Arduino.